A great way to add some extra oomph to your game is by using camera shape. Whoa, it's great for emphasizing action and making your camera feel more part of the world. So in this video, we'll go over how to make your own camera shake. And towards the end, I'll show you how to set up an awesome tool that I personally use to shake things up. Get it? Because of the shape. Also, this video is sponsored by Dennis Penduda. Dennis is an awesome game dev tutor who's just launched a new course on Udemy, the complete Unity 3D game development course. By taking the course, you'll learn how to code in C Sharp, make basic 3D assets using Blender, as well as get a solid understanding of Unity. When you're done, you will have created six different games from Pong to Farmville. You'll also learn how to monetize your game using Unity ads. If this sounds like something you're interested in, simply click the link in the description to get started and get a discount. Also special thanks to Sean Carey, Diego Geik, Judeman, Dying Guyan, Befio, Infinity PBR, Yorai Omer and Hans Hoftoon for their support on Patreon. All right, let's get started. So here's a scene in Unity where every time I click with my mouse, an explosion appears. But of course, this could look way cooler if we added some camera shake. To do that, let's select our main camera and let's add a new component to this called camera shake. Let's hit new script, select C sharp and hit create an ad. Now we can go ahead and delete both of the methods here and instead we want to create our own one. But we don't want this to be a normal function. We want this to be a coroutine. If you've never heard about coroutines before, I suggest checking out the link in the description. For now, we're just going to power through. Whenever you're working with coroutines, you want to make sure to have using system.collections. And instead of writing void at the beginning of our function, we now write i enumerator. Then we follow it by the name of our function, which we'll just call shake. And our shake function is going to take in two parameters, one for the duration of the shake and one for the magnitude, in other words, the strength of our shake. And the first thing that we want to do is store the original position of our camera before we start shaking so that we can reset it once we're done. We'll create a vector three for this and call it original position and set it equal to transform.localPosition. And then we want to create a while loop because we want to keep shaking for X amount of seconds as specified by our duration. So we could go ahead and create a float called elapsed. And this is going to keep track of how much time has elapsed since we started shaking. So by default, we'll set this to zero. Then we want to keep shaking as long as while elapsed is less than the duration. So in other words, as long as the amount of time that has gone by since we started shaking doesn't exceed the duration, well, then we probably want to keep shaking. And there are a bunch of different ways to calculate the offset you want to apply to your camera in order to make it look like it's shaking. But it can actually be done in an extremely simple way. We're simply going to be offsetting it by a random amount on the X and Y every frame. So first we'll calculate the X, so float X equals a random range between negative one and one. And we can then multiply this with our magnitude. So the greater the magnitude, the more we'll offset our camera. And we'll do the same thing on the y. So float y equals random.range between negative one and one. And we'll multiply it again with the magnitude. Then we simply need to apply this offset to our camera's position. So we'll go transform dot local position equals a new vector three. And here we'll give it our x, our y. And you could definitely offset it on the z as well. But in our case, I don't think that's necessary. So we'll simply use original position dot z. And this is kind of where the magic of the coroutine comes in, because we want this while loop to basically be running alongside our update function so that every time the update function runs, we go through and run this code once as well. To do that, we use a single line of code. We write yield return null. This basically means that before we continue on to the next iteration of the while loop, we want to wait until the next frame is drawn. Again, the syntax might be really weird if you've never encountered a coroutine before, but that's basically what is happening. Also, we of course want to make sure to update our elapsed time. So right before we wait for the next frame, we are going to write elapsed plus equals time dot delta time. So every frame we increase this value by the amount of time that went by. And so this is going to keep running until we exceed our duration, at which point we're going to get to this point in our code and we can go ahead and reset our position. So we'll go transform dot local position equals our original position. And there we go. We've now created a coroutine that is going to shake our camera. Of course, we want to be able to access this from another script in order to trigger it. So we'll go ahead and mark it as public. Then we can go back into Unity. We should see we have no errors here. 
We can go to the point where we want to trigger our camera shake. In my case, that's under my explosion trigger. This is just a very simple script that every time I click with my mouse, it's going to play this particle effect. So let's open up the script. And as you can see, this is exactly what it's doing. We reference the explosion. We check if we get a mouse button down. And if we do, we press play on the explosion. So just like we reference our particle system, we also need to reference our camera shake. So public camera shake and we'll just call it camera shake. And then right after our explosion starts playing, let's go camera shake dot, and then we can simply call the shake function. However, here's another thing that you need to remember when working with coroutines, and that is whenever we want to start a coroutine, we can't just call it like a normal function. Instead, we have to go and write start coroutine, and we then pass it the function that we want to start, like this. And now we can simply feed it the duration. I'm gonna set that to 0.15 and the magnitude, I'm gonna set that to 0.4. And now if we save this, go to Unity and drag in our main camera and then try to press play, we can see that something happens. The camera is definitely shaking, but it also seems to be snapping to another position. That's because we're currently just overriding the position of our main camera. And our main camera might have some position in the world that we don't just want to ignore. So what we do instead is create an empty game object that is basically going to be the anchor of our camera. So we'll go to the hierarchy, right click on our camera and hit create empty. And we'll call this our camera parent or camera holder. And make sure to reset the transform here so it's at the same position as our main camera. We'll then drag this out and instead take our camera and parent it to the camera holder. So now our main camera's position should always be 0, 0, 0. And then when we want to actually move our camera, we instead move the camera holder. This means that we can go ahead and override the position of our camera as much as we want. It's still going to stay in the same general area under the camera holder. So if we now hit play, we can see our camera shake is working. Awesome! So that's a simple and quick way to do a camera shake by yourself. But it has some limitations. It doesn't give too much control over the shake. It doesn't rotate the camera in any way. There's no fading in and out of the shake. And there's no control over roughness or frequency. It's always moving the camera every frame. And so if you want smoother shaking, this is not the way to go. And also having to reference the camera shake every time and you start coroutine seems a bit clunky. So if you want to get serious about your camera shake, I recommend going to the asset store and picking up EC Camera Shake. It's completely free and I'll of course have a link for it in the description. I'm going to go ahead and hit import, hit import once more. And you should now see a folder in your project called EC Camera Shake. Under here we have some documentation, the different scripts, as well as a demo scene that you can check out. In our case, I'm just going to go to the game view here. I'm going to select our camera and get rid of the camera shake. And instead, I'm going to go under the EC camera shake and add the camera shaker. Here we can choose how much we want this shake to influence both our position and rotation. For now, we can just leave these values as is. And the cool thing is that if we now go into our explosion trigger, we can get rid of this variable at the top. I will go ahead and delete this piece of code as well. Instead, we'll go to the very top and say that we want to be using easy camera shake. And now all we need to do is go camera shaker dot instance, and then we can do dot shake once. And this is going to shake the camera once with all the values that we now specify. First, we're going to give it a magnitude. I'm going to set that to four. We can give it a roughness. As it says here, roughness of the shake, lower values are smoother, higher values are more jarring. I'm going to set this to four as well, since we are working with an explosion here. We can then set the fade in time. I'm going to set that to 0.1 and a fade out time. And I'll set that to one. And if we save this and play, voila! We now have a much smoother camera shake that is both easier to use and allows for much more in-depth control. Pretty cool, right? Now I guess all we need is some sound effects. <laughs> That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future one. Also make sure to check out the complete Unity 3D game development course. There's a link in the description. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in January and a special thanks to Sean Carey, Diego Geik, Judeman, Diane Gein, Befio, Infinity PPR, Yorai Omer, Cyborg Mummy, Derek Heemskirk, Murr, Faisal Marify, Beardo Dai, John Ramirez, DoubleTap45, James P, Superman the Great, John Burgard, Jason Latito, Alex Wakitsky, Bjorn Fuhrknapp, Suni Jakobsen, James Rogers, Robert Bund, Rob Fern, and Erasmus.